Now, Chinese water dragons have to be one of the most beautiful mid-sized lizards you can get. Of course, there's those gorgeous greens, those impressive spikes in the males, that beautiful striped tail, and then, of course, the colorful blue-orange-red chin. Really, they're just incredible. Now, although the Chinese water dragon is quite gorgeous, there are some things that I think the average keeper should definitely know before attempting to keep this species. It can be uh, a little challenging, a little difficult, and definitely some tips can come in hand before trying your luck with the Chinese water dragon. But today I thought I'd make a video going all over the things that you need to know before owning a Chinese water dragon. With all that being said, let's sit back, relax, let's get into it, and let's roll the intro. is not super handleable. You know, it can be very tempting, you know, going to your local pet store, seeing this tiny little water dragon, something like this. You're like, yeah, these things are pretty cool, you know? Keep it in a 20 gallon, we'll call it good. That's not gonna be the case. Of course, with these guys spanning just about three feet, I mean, you can take a look. Of course, with this mostly being tailed, they are still a pretty large lizard. With that being said, you're gonna need a very large setup. Uh, personally, for me, I have my adult male Chinese water dragon inside of a three foot by three foot by five foot enclosure. Uh, however, I feel like this should only be really used as a minimum. I think bigger would always be better with these guys. Something like a 3x3b6 would even be better. Of course, with Chinese water dragons being both semi-aquatic and arboreal, you're gonna need, of course, need that height of that five to six feet, while also utilizing some sort of large water area for your dragon to get into. I think it's something the keeper should definitely know before getting Chinese water dragons. Although it's small enough to fit into 20 gallon right now, it will not last that way for very long. Now, speaking of aquariums, I think that's gonna bring me to my next point, which is gonna be number two, Aquariums can be a little tricky with the Chinese water dragon. Now, if you guys know anything about Chinese water dragons, you know that they are known for two main things, nose rubbing and head bashing. Uh, if any of you guys don't know what that means, it basically means they do not understand what glass is. They don't really understand that there's a barrier between them and what's outside of the glass, and they uh, then ram their face into it as hard as they can because they don't think anything's there. Then they hit their face, and then they do that repeatedly, and they look like this with no face. That's what happens with aquariums. Although I don't necessarily recommend aquariums for Chinese water dragons, that's not to say that you cannot use them. Uh, personally for me, of course, grow tents, that is my go-to for Chinese water dragons. I think just because of their high stress nature and their flightiness, that they seem to be feel a lot more secure in this enclosed space, where you still have that nice little, you know, 10 by 10 viewing window where you can get in and peek at them. Uh, obviously, as you saw earlier, my guy is not as handleable as he appears right now. Uh, not only that, of course, with grow tents being a fabric-like material, a mylar, uh, you're gonna have a lot less issues with them bashing because there's not really, it's not a hard surface, it's it's flexible. Uh, while it's still being tough enough for them to withstand them from clawing it open, it is soft enough for them not to again have their face look like this. You don't want their face to look like that. Now I get it, grow tents are not for everybody. A lot of people say, you know, they don't like how they look, they don't like not being able to see their lizard, and that's totally okay. You can definitely utilize some sort of custom enclosure and or aquarium for the time being. However, with that being said, I strongly recommend at the very least you cover at least three sides of that aquarium just to make sure that your dragon isn't fully just bashing its face. I, I don't know, head bashing, face bashing? What, what's the terminology for that? I mean, they go boom into the wall. That's uh. That's what they do, use whatever terminology you want for it. <laughs> the next tip I would definitely give for new keepers before they get a Chinese water dragon is, as you saw in the beginning of this video, they are not the calmest demeanor when it comes to reptiles. Um, this isn't gonna be something like a bearded dragon where it's gonna be able to just laze around with you, chill out on the couch, be a couch potato, anything like that. Uh, for the most part, these guys can be pretty flighty and elusive. Uh, of course, with them being arboreal, they're born with these uh, pretty sharp nails, which dig into your hands. My hands are pretty cut up, but gotta do it for the video. You know what I'm saying? Uh, of course, definitely worth it. I mean, just check this guy out if this will focus. My God, look at this animal. But definitely what the Chinese water dragon lacks in tameability and handleability, I guess would be the better word. It makes up in sure beauty. Just check this guy out. I think this has to be one of my best display animals. I really enjoy coming in, just checking him out. He's always either in those uh, leafy pots on some branches, just chilling out, uh, stuff like that. They're just, they're really fascinating just to, you know, lay back and watch. 
Now with this being said, of course, it doesn't mean that every Chinese water dragon in the world is unhandleable, you know. I, I'm gonna get spammed with comments now. Dakota, I can handle my Chinese water dragon whenever. What are you trying to say? Yes, you can tame these guys down and they can become handleable to this point where, look, look folks, one hand. I'm gonna put two hands now because I think he's gonna run away. <laughs> um, yes, it, while, while they can be tamed down and eventually perhaps get to the point where you can handle them with no issue, it's not gonna be as easy with the Breeder Dragon. Some more work and dedication is definitely gonna have to go into it. And then the last tip I have to give for new keepers trying to get Chinese Wire Dragons is of course, Make sure you enjoy him, man. I mean, like I said, this has to be one of my favorite mid-sized lizards when it comes to display animal. Let's just get a close in real quick on this guy. Of course, he's just gonna constantly be watching me instead of at the camera, but this is just a magnificent animal. You have these glorious greens. I wanna zoom in and focus in on this shot. Look at this and it, it, it's simply stunning. I mean, every time I pull this animal out, I'm, I'm lost with words with how beautiful it is. Chinese water dragons are definitely an amazing species. And if you can tackle, you know, what I said in this video and just the care they require, I think they can make an amazing animal and a pet. Animal, there are, they are an amazing animal, but they can also make a cool pet. Let's wrap this up. Get up for literally, I don't know, three seconds and then he's like, oh, I want him back in. So we'll, we'll put him back in. Come on, buddy. Oh, I know, I know, I'm horrible. I took you out from a video. I'm the worst person ever. Here you go. Here. This is what I don't, okay, never mind. he went in. There you have it, folks. Just some things I think you should know before getting a Chinese water dragon. However, now it's your turn. Let me know what you thought of this video. Think I went over some good points, made, made some good statements, things that people really should look out for? Hell, maybe I missed some stuff. Maybe it was like, Dakota, you, you didn't mention this? Well, what's wrong with you? Hey, if I didn't miss that thing, leave me a comment down there. Let me know how the video is. Let me know your suggestion for new Chinese water dragon keepers. And other than that, of course, we're gonna give a huge shout out to Zen Habitats. If you're unfamiliar with Zen Habitats, they are a reptile aftermarket enclosure maker. They make some beautiful designs like this enclosure right here. Look at that thing. That is a fantastic setup. If you're a little curious about one for your juvenile to sub adult Chinese water dragon, I highly recommend the four foot by two foot by four foot option. It would definitely make an impressive display enclosure for the Chinese water dragon, and you could really make it into something cool. If you wanna learn more about Zen Habitats or potentially purchase one, you can go down there right in the description where I have it at Zen Habitats. Uh, other than that, if you like the video, please feel free to give us a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of my animals or my breeding products, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, DBCB Exotics. We're also on TikTok. If you like some cool merch designs like these three right here, we got them down there as well at Teespring, where we also happen to have Patreon. Lastly, that's the last one, patreon.com slash dbcvexotic, where you get up-to-date information on all my breeding projects. Of course, I have the plethora of different things, such as ball pythons, toke geckos, monitor lizards, a couple different species of New Caledonian geckos, crocodile skins. There's a bunch of stuff. We're really getting to the end of breeding season. This is your last chance to check out some adorable baby gecko picks, baby snake picks, anything like that. Of course, you get first dibs on any of the babies I produce, and I think that's about it. Uh, one last thing, your name actually gets to be in the intro right here, which is happening 